Welcome to Travelling 20, your weekly passport to travelling like a pro. I'm Jackie Falgate and each week I'll be joined by travel insiders to uncover their top tips in just 20 minutes. Today we take a peek into the world of family holidays with Luxury Escape's CEO and co-founder Adam Schwab, who's going to share his wealth of experience to help you plan your next family escape. Adam, we've brought in the big guns for this one, a professional traveller, no less. (laughs) I'm not sure how professional I am, but uh, had a bit of experience with the kids. Yes. Now let's start with your kids. I've got two kids, six and 11, and navigating the world of travel can be very difficult. How old are your kids? Very similar to yours. I've got a seven and eight year old. Okay. So tell me, what are your number one tips? First of all, we're getting on the plane. We've got kids. What do we do? Travelling with kids is super hard. I think uh, you would know, and it's a lot of people are quite scared of travelling with kids, understandably so, because there's a lot of, you've got to be a lot more prepared. You can't, yep. if you're with a, a friend or a partner, you can rock up to Bali and find <laughs> your accommodation. Yep. Obviously, you book with Luxury Escapes first if you can, uh, but if you can't, you can just rock up anywhere. But with kids, you've got to be very planned. So step one is knowing when you want to fly is really important. So we've been to Fiji and I, I will be really careful not to take those 7 a.m. flights. So you think yep. 7 a.m., that's fine. But when you think 7 a.m. international flight, even to Fiji. We're getting the kids up before 4. You're getting the kids up at potentially 3 o'clock if you live yeah. in Geelong. So there's... That's a really big one. So often you'll – and another one is the overnight flight with kids. Like if if your kids are really good sleepers, maybe you can do a long over. Like if you go to the UK, for example, or US, you probably have an overnight yep. because the flight is that long. But if you're going to Bali, Thailand, Fiji, that short haul or mid haul, you probably don't want to be flying overnight with kids. It's just they won't be able to sleep. It'll ruin them for one to two days of the trip. Seven-day trip, that's a third of the trip gone. So – Knowing when to fly is really important and I'd always suggest flying probably a 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock flight is probably ideal. Now, how much travel have you done with your kids? Probably, so my wife is from England, so we tend to go back a couple of times a year. So we've probably done, for my eight-year-old, he's probably done about 20 what we call long-haul flights uh, and my seven-year-old's probably done sort of 15. So, And then probably another... 30 or 40 short haul. So obviously very lucky to work with Lucky Escapes to have access to this kind of holiday. But we've taken a lot and done a lot wrong and a lot right. I remember we took my son, who was six months at the time, to, to Bali. So we were flying effectively midnight till 5 a.m. That was probably something we wouldn't do again. Uh, so you'd probably fly afternoon if we can. Mm. Again, some places are much harder than others. So you've really got to pick the place. Sometimes... Even if you're in Bali, for example, and every flight to Melbourne comes back after eight o'clock, maybe you're better off flying to Singapore, coming back from Singapore and doing a couple of days in Singapore even. And it's that kind of, do I break up my trip with kids decision? Do I try to suck it up and go all the way wherever I'm going or do I do a stopover? What's your recommendation? Like, Should, if I've got young kids, maybe go to Dubai or Singapore? That's a really good question. Uh, We tend to go sort of the UK a lot. We tend to fly straight through, but... What we will often, sometimes often do is do a transit hotel at Singapore Airport, for example. So what the transit, what a transit hotel is. So there's two types of airport hotels. There's the one that's just outside the airport. So you get your bags, you check in. It's a bit of a hassle, but the room's quite comfortable. So Crown Plaza at Changi in Singapore is a classic example. Yep. It's not a cheap hotel. It's a really nice hotel, great pool, good setup. You've got to get your bags, got to check out, all that kind of stuff. Singapore also has a transit hotel, which is run by, I think, a business called Ambassador. They... So what happens if you if you say you're going to London via Singapore, you can book a flight that's during the day. So leave Singapore, leave Melbourne at or leave Sydney at say four o'clock, land in Singapore at nine o'clock, which is really midnight mm. your time. Check into the to the, you don't get your luggage. You leave your luggage which somewhere is in the airport. A great idea in the first place. <laughs> yeah, so you, you, you've got to make sure you pack your carry yep. on. Leave your like luggage somewhere in Changi. You don't yep. collect it. You, you sleep for six seven hours. So the kids get a proper sleep because it's hard to sleep on a plane, especially if you're in economy and yep. don't use bassinets all that kind of stuff. Kids can get a normal night's sleep, and then you take your second leg, however time that is, and it's just timed right. So you you can have less jet lag. The kids, you don't lose two or three days of your trip. It's just a better way to do it. It is such a good idea. And a little closer to home, maybe if we're not doing the long haul, you've done a lot of travel around Asia. Um, but let's maybe start with Fiji to begin with. Um, I've taken my kids there and I found it to be um, one of the easiest holidays, the all-inclusive holiday. It was just so smooth, 
straight there from Melbourne, straight back. Um, and it was relaxing. And I think as a parent, that's the number one thing that you want. Absolutely. I, I'm not sure if you use the kids clubs at all. Oh, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think there's a, there's a kids club and a kids club. So yeah. Fiji does kids club really well. Totally. The Fijian people are so lovely, so gentle. They're kind of... The kids kind of prefer being in kids' club. My kids, I'm not sure your kids love – my kids are very pedantic on their kids' club. Yes. So they love they love a cruise kids' club, for example, because they do a really good job. We're going to talk about that in a yeah, minute. We'll get to yeah. there. They love a Fiji kids' club. They might not love other places mm. as much because – for whatever reason. So I think you need to be able to pick your kids' clubs. And mm. Fiji, just do it really well. There's, they do. What you don't want is a room with some stuff. and no, you They want can get activity. that at home. Exactly. You want yeah. activities. And Fiji is great. They'll, they'll go – looking for crabs they'll, they'll do actual real activities yeah so and my kids did crab racing actually yeah the crab racing yeah, stuff yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then they get the crab and they race the crab yeah. so my daughter still talks about how her crab won when we were last at Jean-Michel which is a great kids yes. resort but the beauty of Fiji really easy flights so you've got no jet lag it's a two hour time difference and the, the other beauty is you land at Nandi Airport Nadi Airport and a lot of people will go to Denarau or Coral Coast mm. so you might go to Shangri-La and Outrigger you might go to a a Sheraton, uh, a Hilton, one of those hotels. They're generally half an hour from the airport. Yep. Is, it's not a two-hour drive. So you really – you can leave at a 10 o'clock flight and you're in your – even with time difference, you're in the hotel by six. So that is pretty good. And then you have a normal night's sleep and you're straight into it the next day. And then you drop the kids at the kids' club. You know the kids' club's great. They're super great. They're super gentle. You can get your nannying at night if you want to go and have a drink with your partner or you can take the kids with you. It's, it's just yep. the optionality is great. It's not an overly expensive destination. So mm. – and a place like Hilton, for example, is apartment style. So you can easily have the two better or a big one better. One thing, again, cost is an object here. and uh, Travel isn't always cheap. It can be, but it isn't always. One thing, I don't, I'm not sure if you're the same, but I don't like having kids in the same bed or room as us. Absolutely not, Adam. No. <laughs> Hard no. <laughs> and I've been sucked in before about that. Yeah. So it's something I think, you know, those adjoining rooms are really important. And yeah. I think something Luxury Escapes does really well. Yeah, so the joining rooms, and there's also rooms that might not be adjoining but are separated. So it could be a it could be a one bedroom with a door that mm. you can put a kid on a day bed. That's if as long as your kids aren't like twelve, yeah, that it sort of works. So I'm not a, like some people are completely fine with having kids in the same room. I'm not one of those people. Uh, it doesn't like you are either. So it's the format of the room. Obviously, if you can get a two bedroom, that's that's perfect. Yeah, uh, because you don't want to. It's no point having a couple of times I've done it. You've had the kids in your Kids are in bed at eight and suddenly you've got the light off at eight and you can't talk because you might wake them up. So you kind of want white go. So yes. it's there's a couple of things. So it's flight time's a big one, room configuration's a big one and cost of destination. There's no point taking the kids to a $10,000 a night place because it's kind of a bit waste on them. And your luxury escapes will try and make that really clear. This is a really kid-friendly place or this is a place that's a bit more adult. And do you have a couple on your list for Fiji that you would say, if you are a family, this is one you really need to look at? Yeah, I think all the Denarau properties are great. So the classic Hilton is fantastic. Uh, the Sheraton property is really good. Radisson's a fantastic kids' property in Fiji. Uh, and then the Coral Coast. So you've got Shangri-La, really good kids' property, Castaway. I think Castaway could actually sometimes be adults only, not always, but... Uh, Usually we're really clear on the description what's a kid-friendly place and what's not. Uh, but there's some intercons are really good kid-friendly places as well. So, I mean, you say, so it's yeah, a great property. It. I'm actually there in January. So oh, I, I actually kids. thought for children, I would 10 out of 10 recommend that one. I absolutely loved it. Also because the beach there is so beautiful and you can snorkel off the beach. And yep. it was actually our, our older daughter's first time Amazing. Um, to actually snorkel yeah. with, a, with a reef. And it was one of those life experiences that absolutely. I'll always remember. So we've ticked Fiji off the list. So when it comes to Thailand, where do you recommend taking a family? I think Phuket's a great one. Phuket and Kolak, which is next to Phuket. Yes. So I was in Kolak with the kids and my extended family actually – six months ago at just saying JW Marriott, which is an amazing property. I've got a really nice kids area there. Any place where it's quite cost effective and economical is always great. Because you can get the two bedroom. So we stayed at a hotel that had we were in a, we were in interconnecting rooms. So it was perfect. But you can get two bedrooms. So Thailand is a, a great option. Phuket's great because you can often fly to Phuket directly. So Again, as yeah. we talked about the place you can go direct, save that extra flight. A lot of people do go to Phuket via Bangkok or via Singapore as well. And you absolutely can. And we tend to do that, but you can get there direct as well through Jetstar, through Thai. There's a few different ways to get there. Uh, there's Bangkok's probably not as kid friendly no, as maybe other yeah, places in Thailand. Yeah. Uh, Koh Samui is quite kid friendly as well. 
Yep. Uh, I think Phuket's probably your prime destination with kids. I and mean, we're always watching our purse strings as well. I think Phuket is a really good destination because you can have an amazingly cheap holiday but still have those wonderful luxury experiences at the same time. Exactly. And there's like, there's a club met in Phuket, obviously very targeted at kids. We, we work with a place called Katatani, which is amazing for kids, right on the beach there, got a great kids' pool so and, and really good kids' rooms as well. So well, I think what we want, as we're talking, you want ease. You don't want to have to fly too far you don't have to spend too much you want to get a nice two bedroom in a really nice location where not only the hotel's economical but you can eat out you don't have to spend so you go to europe which is great with couples but if you're spending a couple hundred bucks on every uh, on every dinner or every lunch it starts adding up so when you're adding kids there it becomes really difficult for for most of us so picking the destination is really important and I think the other thing we learned, we've, we've featured Thailand in this podcast series. And one of the things I learned is the amazing activities that kids can do, like say a cooking class or one of the pools that is a luxury escapes hotel is, is 2.2 kilometres long. Yeah. So there's a lot there for the kids to actually do rather exactly. than just saying, okay, you're going to the kids club as well. Exactly. And you, you, as a kid, you want to spend some time with kids as well, but you want to spend time with stuff to do. So yes. you want a nice kids area. <laughs> there's a place called Suniva, which we work with, one of the best hotels brands in the world uh, and there's a actually Suniva in Thailand and they have to your point a kids cooking class specifically where the kids spend a couple of hours cooking and you you actually get a they have their own private plane so you fly from Bangkok by private plane into this hotel again not the most cost economical <laughs> place to go but if you like do have bucket list. if you do have a bit more money to spend that is a great option but yeah. there's so many amazing places in Thailand as well that are very economical and you probably often spend less in Thailand than you might in Queensland yeah, and you might not think that, I think, yeah. as an Aussie. Yeah. yeah. Okay, do I want to go overseas? Well, actually, I can. I can do it in a really cost-effective way. Exactly. Now, speaking of that and being overseas, the Maldives, with children, I'm dying to know because that is probably at the top of my bucket list yeah. with kids. How you manage it, you talked about flights um, in one of our other podcast episodes. We actually look at this and go, well, maybe with children, you don't go via Singapore. You might go via, say, Dubai yeah. um, and then do an overnighter there and then head on to the islands. I think you can do it. I think Singapore, if you're going to do Singapore to Maldives, you probably want two or three days in Singapore. Yep. So if you haven't done Singapore, you haven't done it with the kids, it is actually a great destination for kids with yes. Gardens by the Bay and all that sort of stuff, yeah. Universal. There's heaps of stuff to do with kids. You can stay in Sentosa for a couple of days, which is a fantastic destination. So I think Singapore is a good option. I think Dubai is a great option if you're looking to do a bit more quickly. <coughs> there is a transit hotel in Dubai as well, really easy. Stay there overnight. T- Timing is really important to Maldives. Well, you want to get to the Maldives probably before two or three o'clock. A yes. lot of Maldives hotels you need access by seaplane. And you can get some by boat as well, but not all. So the majority are seaplane. Seaplanes don't fly in the dark. So you got to you don't want to rock up at Maldives at five o'clock, which is when some planes do get in. You just got to be really careful, even more so with kids, because you don't want to have an issue with kids having to find accommodation in Malay. So... Timing is really important and picking the hotel is really important. Now, the Maldives is my favourite destination anywhere is in the it? world. Really? I'm jealous that Tom I got to do the Maldives episode. It is next – obviously, this isn't a Maldives episode specifically, but it is next level in terms of the, the water is the best. The you said, what was it for you? Yep. Water, temperature, food. Some resorts will fly food in from the South, from the Queen Victoria market. So the food is – it's like dining at a chef's hat yeah. restaurant every day. So And it's as much as you want, whenever you want, all that kind of stuff. So it's – Unbelievable. Like the, we, Pullman, one of our great partners, you open the – I'm not a drinker, but you open the, the drawer and there's French champagne in there. If you drink it, they'll replace it in like an hour. So it's that kind of level wow. of, of – with incredible snorkeling, incredible scuba diving if you want to scuba dive. But you can literally swim out five minutes from your villa and you're at the reef break. And so you can – there's and there's some resorts that are probably more applicable for kids in terms of snorkeling. Yep, so let's go through those because yep. I think – the Maldives, if you haven't been there, like me, you go, well, where do I actually start with children and what is going to make it, one, cost-effective? What I've learned from this podcast series is go the all-inclusive option. Absolutely. Um, but how yeah. do I choose a resort? All-inclusive, you're right, 100%. Always go the all-inclusive or certainly go a couple of meals if you're not that big an eater, but you want to get your breakfast and your dinner yep. covered. Some people can get away with no lunch if, <laughs> if, they, if they can hold on. But uh, I've stayed at five or six Maldives resorts, not all with kids, but – I thought Fairmont has a great kids offering. Uh, It's got a really good kids club. uh, We we work with Fairmont a fair bit at Lux. Uh, The reef break there is about 50 50 metres from... from So it's very easy for kids to jump out and snorkel. Finaloo is really good for kids, another great partner of Lux. Pullman's very good for kids, another great partner of Lux. Uh, The question is, do you go one better or two better? Fairmont does like a one and a half. So you have basically 
you can wall off a second bedroom. So it's not technically a two better, but it turns into a semi two better. Great option. Pullman okay. does something really similar. So Pullman so that, has. Is that something then for our listeners, if you do have kids, then that's something they should consider. How can we actually make that cheaper? For sure. By getting the two rooms. You pay effectively a 50% increase on the one better, but it's not Rather as expensive than. as a two better. That said, a lot of people, Maldives is often a once in a lifetime. Uh, so sometimes it's worth paying a little bit more, getting the two better. I, I probably wouldn't suggest the one better with kids. It, it is quite tight in Maldives. Uh, one better with a, just your, your partner, absolutely Fine. perfect. Yep, yep. With the kids can be difficult, but the two betters are huge. Like I stayed in the two better at Finlu, and this place was bigger than my place at home in, in Melbourne. It was really? like 200 plus square metres. It was huge. It was, And the pool was like a huge pool. So it was, And then you had a beach like a metre okay. past there. So yep. they are incredibly large the two betters uh they're um i've had a few friends i've sent on sent to melodies with family and they've loved it so you do have to be really careful but if you really want to ha- take your kids on the best holiday they've ever had and can afford it because it's clearly it's not for everyone but if you can afford it it's an unbelievable destination it's a bucket list isn't it really i, t- yeah, I took kids 100 yeah, bucket list. i took kids when i was two and four probably too young uh, to appreciate it <laughs> to appreciate it and just to you got to look after them so yep. there's a lot of water around i think Probably your kid's age is probably great. So yep. six plus, yep. uh, 11's perfect. Uh, yep. I'm thinking my kids next year, they'll be seven and nine. So probably about right as well. So I think you probably want a six, seven-year-old kid who's confident swimming. And what do they do? What, what are the key things for kids there to do? Obviously, you've got a kids club at a lot of these resorts. You've yep. got your snorkeling, um, but there's a little bit more you can do too. Like um, I've learned, you know, there's manta ray swimming and there's a whole bunch of things that you might not otherwise have yeah. on your list at another resort elsewhere in the world. Yeah, there's a big uh, marine focus. So some, some of the resorts have marine biologists, for example, on site, but there's a, it's a big marine focus. You can... The kids will learn about marine life and they'll go and be able to snorkel with manta rays and sharks and all that kind of stuff. It is, and there's coral, it is, it's like going to the Barrier Reef but not having to spend two hours going to Quicksilver. You can literally swim five minutes out, which for kids is incredible. And mm. you don't have to put all the scuba gear on, which is a hassle and all that kind of stuff. And the water's warm, so they're not complaining. The water's amazing. <laughs> you, don't need, you don't need wetsuit. It is... Yeah. Uh, if you and take your, take your little kids down there, I'm sure that you'll have an incredible oh, experience. It's on the, look, it's on the list, Adam. It's on the <laughs> list. Um, also on the list is cruising with kids. And this is something that um, I think a lot of people, you think about cruising in maybe the 80s and the 90s and you think that's actually not going to be for me. Yeah. But things have really changed. And have you actually done that with your kids? And we have. how did you find it? We've done it a couple of times. Have you done a cruise with kids um, yet? No, I haven't done a cruise right, with myself. Let me myself. try and convince you. I to, know. Uh, well, I've as I said, we'd, we've spoken to Virgin Voyages um, <laughs> before this podcast series and I've been well and truly informed that this exactly. is something I need to do. Well, I think Virgin could be an adults only cruise. They probably cut the kids <laughs> yeah, on that one. But uh, there's plenty of other cruise ships that yeah. take kids. Disney obviously being the main one, great partner of, of LA. Uh, I took our kids, our first, so our first ever cruise was about four years ago. Our kids were very young, and two and four, that same Maldives trip. Mm. So I had a, a three month trip based in Europe with my wife's family in, in the UK. And our first, obviously, our first point of call was we needed to fill out our time because I had a mm. sabbatical from work and we. I said to my wife, why don't we do a cruise? And my wife was, like a lot of people, oh, yeah. don't know about cruising. Yeah. There isn't a lot of old people. And I said, well, I don't know, but why don't we try it? Because we've got time anyway. So we did a cruise from Barcelona to Rome on NCL, so Norwegian Cruise Line. It's actually an American cruise line called yeah. NCL. <laughs> and long story short, my wife got back and booked another one. So that's how much she was converted completely. It is an incredible way to see Europe. Uh, it's even better with kids. So... Th- the beauty of cruise is and why so many, so many people who go on a cruise just love it. All these people who are the cruise addicts, they're cruise addicts for a reason. Mm. Because once you go on one, you actually love it. So You, you don't have to take your luggage everywhere every day. You don't day. have to unpack every day. <laughs> it's Especially when you've got kids, that's a huge mm. And it's actually really cost effective. So we got two balcony rooms. It was like $1,000 a night for both, all-inclusive food. So, yep. And you're going from Barcelona to Mallorca to Cannes to Dubrovnik to uh, Montenegro. All these places you probably want to go anyway. We stopped at couple of places in Italy as well. So places that were on our list, but we could never have taken kids there. It would have been a ridiculous hassle. So we, a little two-year-old in a pram, we we're pushing around. They had an amazing time. There's a show every night that, so when you're on a Disney cruise, which we did on, we did this year, it's almost Broadway style, but even a Norwegian cruise, the shows are incredible. So you have dinner at early, like 5.30. With the kids, yeah. With the kids. You can have a later session as well, but we would obviously go to the early one. And then seven o'clock, you go and watch a show. At 8.30, you put the kids to bed. And it's and then you get up and go to another place and you're in another port the next day. It is unbelievable way to travel with kids. I think Europe is by far the best place to cruise. I think Asia's okay as well. Hawaii's okay as well. But I think if you're doing a first cruise, incredible in Europe. And again, 
we want to make it easy when we travel with children. And I think cruising for me, that's why you would do it because it's actually easy. There's nothing worse than having to go, okay, I'm going here for three days. I'm going here for another two days. I've got to pack everything down. I've got to pack everything back up. Yeah. By the time you get there, the kids are just cranky and exhausted. So I imagine it sort of negates a lot of that. 100%. And little things like if you've got a two-year-old and you need a car seat, yeah. how do you, and you rock up in this and the, and the taxi doesn't have a car seat. It's, it's really hard to travel with young kids. I think kids under... We talked about the six-year-old Maldives yeah. thing. Like, if you've got kids under six, cruising is an incredible option. And four is probably that sweet spot because they can use the ki- kids. Their cru- cruise cruisers have great kids club as well. Exception being Disney, your kids can go from like two years old. So mm. if you've got young kids, Disney cruising is a great option. We took that Disney cruise this year. The kids are absolutely obsessed. Adam, for our listeners, if there's a couple of places they should definitely check out on the luxury escapes list, I, I want you just to t- tell me about those and, and why they're so special for children. Yeah, I definitely think Fiji has got to be number one uh, and probably Thailand number two. I think that's yeah. probably – and then I'd put cruising in there as well. So what we've okay. talked about really covers those key points. Yeah. If you can stretch your budget, obviously Europe's great. Cruising is a great way to do it. Uh, US for Disneyland, if you like to ski, all that kind of stuff is really good. But US is obviously not super cheap at the mm-hmm. moment. Uh, and obviously kids amped up the price. But we did a couple of days in New York. We did Disney Cruise. Kids loved it. So it's if you can get there, US is a great option for kids. just a little bit more expensive. But we're heading to Fiji first. We are heading to Fiji first. <laughs> Adam, thank you. It's been so lovely to chat and get your expert tips. Thanks, Jack. It's great, be, great to be here. Thanks for listening. Experience more of the world's best holiday destinations with luxury escapes with more inclusions, more value and more expertise. Find and book everything you need from hotels and resorts to flights, tours, cruises and experiences. Stay up to date with other episodes of Travel in 20 on Spotify, Apple or wherever you get your podcasts and visit luxuryescapes.com to get more from your next holiday.